with the words I use on the microphone. And like at night, Flame, you know, we go ham on that mic. It's well, the kids don't really come at night, but yeah. but in the brunches in the daytime. So, and we've been, I'm, I'm, Morgan, you know, when you book us, y'all encourage us to do high energy numbers for brunch, upbeat oh, yeah. numbers. So, you know, sometimes we're naked, sometimes it's a scandal, but I, I, I love that you give disclaimers. A lot of entertainers and MCs or hosts don't. They just go for it. They're like, it ain't my kid. You shouldn't have brought them, you know? And the thing I like about like Hamburger Mary's in Ontario, which is the only brunch that I do do, that is a, a kind of a, a restaurant all ages, is that they're willing to give the parents money back or the, the table their money back before anything's ordered or any, mm -hmm. you know, any foods, because it is a drag show. And like you said, drag is a, a, as an artistic expression of the individual. And like Flame, you are not only a celebrity illusionist <laughs> outside of the the comedy. Like, so if you're on the mic, yes, it's comedy. But like, if I said, hey, I need Tina Turner right now, or hey, we're gonna do whatever. And you're like, I can, I can uh, accommodate you in that. And we do that. But then drag is sexy, drag is fun and drag. Yeah. They, there's a lot of bachelorettes. There's a lot of um, birthday parties and, you know, divorce parties or whatever the kind of parties they have. They are not trying to sit there and see some G-rated stuff. They want to see some raunchy things too. So we walk a fine line as entertainers. And like, I just believe it's up to the parents. Well, how do you feel about Congress implementing that? Because Congress is actually trying to blame the entertainers and the club owners. That's not on Congress. That's not on the entertainers. Morgan, if you're going to do one of your, what number I'd love to see you do? Uh, oh, uh, Get spell away with me to another world. Uh, that song, I don't even know the name of it. But you have on your little blue jean shorts with your body out and everything. Mm -hmm. And the, the breast, and those breastplates look real to me sometimes. So imagine what it looks like to a four-year-old or five-year-old coming to that with pasties on. They don't understand that. So this is what I'm saying. Congress needs to mind the business that pays them. A drag show ain't stopping that. And parents don't need to blame the drag queens, the entertainers, or the club owners for you brought your kid to this. You knew what you were coming to. Well, I think there's a big narrative right now, especially from the the, the right wingers that are they're, they're they're deflecting. And it was been this this all started just after the shooting, uh, and all of a sudden we are groomers, and we are these people that are trying to to take kids into a, a different place now. Flame, you're a parent, and I have known about your don't remind Don't remind me. I've known about your <laughs> kids since I met you. You know, you've always talked about them, and you've done whatever it took to make them happy and, and, and safe. And I, I'm not a parent, personally, but I also think that, you know, that I think they're fucking with the wrong community, because, like, you're picking on the LGBTQ community, and they always have, but now they're targeting, like, the ones that are the strongest and the craziest and the ones that will fight back the most. Entertainers, whether we are cisgendered males, transgender, whatever whatever kind of cat like category we fall into, we're entertainers. And we've always been the ones to raise money for each other, to raise money for the community, to spearhead and to fight back. Now, you want to pick a fight with us, please feel free. Please, <laughs> I would love to, I would love to go head to head. But you have to understand that if you in Congress are going to pick on entertainers and call us groomers and all that, we're the ones that do the most for the community outside of our yeah. own. And to be honest, y'all also are the ones that got us through the pandemic, if we're going to be honest. Yeah. So, Cause I, so, just saying. But if you're going to do that, you definitely have to figure out what's going to happen at Hooters. You're going to have to figure out what's going to happen at any place. Yeah. Um, tilted kilt, any place where children are allowed. And there are uh, women or men, waiters or waitresses that are scantily clad. Or yeah. any sort of, like, where, you know, it's, these right wingers, this, this Republican situation, they are the, the, the party of small government. But they seem to be the ones trying to control private lives and y'all know morgan is scottish so she liked to fight let me just tell y'all right now <laughs> not high but I like morgan somebody is calling you tell them i say no, you on live with happened. me um i know I, I it was honey davenport actually but you know i always think like you know 
if we're going to, like they're going to have to go to concerts they're going to have to go to where, what about cheerleading yeah. football games what have what about all of these things where sexuality is just a part of our our our, our society whether we like to admit it or not yeah, and see, Morgan, I was with the whole story time library thing with the drag queens doing story time until they started dressing like fucking Rihanna and Cardi B at the library. <clears throat> if see, you want to dress like Mrs. Doubtfire, I'm going to let my kids come and listen to story time. But if you're going to dress like a hooker, no, it's inappropriate to me. Well, you know, there is there is tact and there is uh, kind of... So you should have some tact and you should ha and we shouldn't tell any any queen what to do with their aesthetic or how they right. express themselves but you know what sometimes you're not for everything you're not for every event and i know that someone like myself you know if i was to go do a drag queen story time i would want to dress up like something fantasy i would want to yes. dress up in some sort but you know what flame this is this has been a conversation with people like you and I who've been doing drag before Drag Race and the popularity in society of drag, of Drag Race, excuse me. So there's a certain time, there's a certain place for things that, you know, you don't go to Palm Springs and say, you know, it's just an older crowd there, for instance, and they are, they are into more Tina Turner, they're into mm -hmm. more Diana Ross and, and yeah. uh, all of the, the divas. It, well, generally that age group of men are into Donna Summer and, you know, Madonna, Kylie Minogue-esque music. Yeah. But then you don't bring Cardi B to a place like that. Yeah. You should, you should know your audience and you should know how to to accommodate for that. So I'm, getting my, I'm getting my audition reel for RuPaul's Drag Race ready for season, the next season. Now, Flame, here's, here's <laughs> my thing. Let me tell you a story about it. And I was just having this conversation. Oh. The other day. I am so happy that there's so many beautiful trans women um, and, and non-binary uh, entertainers on RuPaul's Drag Race now, and they're really being celebrated. But here's what I need. Here's what I need. I need a girl, a transgendered woman. I need a, a girl that's walk the walk and like a, an OG fight you in a minute on site bitch. That's what I need. I who you want me? To, who you want me? To, Tasha Long was just on here. You can get her. She's all that. <laughs> I'm telling you, I love, I love these new girls, and they're, you know, they're so. But you know, I need a bitch that sucked a dick for a dollar. <laughs> well, I don't know her because a dollar was never in my book. Oh. Right. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I know what but you're saying. <laughs> I, I want someone that actually experienced the trans lifestyle for decades. I, I wanted like a Dina Cass. I want. Oh my God! Yes. I want someone that's going to snap back and, and snap next, you know. I want I want Ruth you, and you guys to do a half trans and half drag queen show. I think that would be for Mimi and Stasha and Raquel and and some hey, gorgeous, beautiful entertainers. And then you have a bunch of good drag queens that's already, that would be a great show. A legendary, like, a, just even having legendary queens on there. Like, and it's not this whole, like, age situation because some of the most beautiful queens and the most entertaining queens to me are are the divas from like stars of the century and like these atlanta girls and like when yeah. when you have people like tommy ross like th all these fans of drag race who i love and i think they're they are getting to see such fantastic things like and these new queens like Carrie Colby and, and and Cornbread and they're so entertaining and they're great. Mm -hmm. But let a bitch come out, let a bitch come out like Raquel Lord, like it, it, and Tasha Long. Tasha is yeah. Tasha is one of the greatest fucking entertainers we have ever had in the drag. And I ain't saying that because that bitch on here. I always tell her that Fantasia, Fantasia will be fantastic on Drag Race. Could you imagine just what the fabric Fantasia would have on Drag Race on that on that stage? And I feel like. The, the the fans of Drag Race are missing out on so many aspects of the drag community because you know there things are starting to be introduced like trans yeah. people are starting to get on Drag Race and we've seen people like Evie Oddly and yeah all of these kind of uh, 
avant-garde drag. I love it. I just want more. I was I'm loving. I'm loving that the inclusion that's happening with Drag Race now, because that was always my issue. There was no one. Morgan, my I said that you're a very handsome young man with that beard, my darling. Oh my God, I'm almost turned on. <laughs> Bitch, if I didn't know what you look like with a wig on, bitch, I might be trying to holler. <laughs> <laughs> but you, um, but you know, I want to even see more inclusion on Drag Race. I want to see some, uh, some trans men as the pit crew. I want to see some trans Ooh. women as the pit crew. Where are the lesbian pit crew? You know, I want to see more diversity in that side, not just with the queens. But it's it's moving along and it's moving forward and that's all that really really matters morgan i so appreciate you coming on with us and just sharing it because morgan you do shows what three four times a week so you're always experiencing all kind of audiences and you're right you really do need to know your audience but it's just weird when you at the drag brunch and you don't know who's coming because they don't tell you who's coming and four right. or five kids come and you you know i already got in my mind i'm about to do this scandal or something you know, and I didn't bring another costume to change. You know, it makes you feel kind of, and then they want, the people always want the kid to come up and tip you. And I do think that that's really cute. But if I get my tits out and I'm shaking my ass in the kid face, you know, that is, that is just inappropriate. Well, you know, <clears throat> there has been, a, there has been a time where like, you know, we had this kid come like obviously in through the show and you know, they came up and they tipped and I brought them up to do a little twirl and I people were tipping the kid, but then someone had complained like, oh my God, that's like prostitution. I said, baby, that's a child. And I think, that those, I think that those people that are accusing us of grooming and accusing us of trying to be sexual with these kids are the ones that are guilty of it themselves. And they're trying to deflect. And I also feel like I don't know anybody I have never met anybody that's even, maybe I don't pay attention, but I just don't think that anybody that I know is even interested in doing any of that. All, yeah. all the queens that I know are, are trying to take care of homeless kids or bring in people that need help or, or donate. And like, you know, I just, I'm, I'm quite mind boggled by yeah. like that, that, path that people are trying to put us on and like yeah. oh, groomers like i'm sorry like i don't know about you but i certainly don't have time to be looking for no kids hmm. <laughs> like, and, and look i'm trying to get rid of man i damn sure don't want to buy <laughs> they're almost they're almost old enough thank god for jesus yeah. morgan you know i'm gonna have to come and do me a drag show i ain't did a drag show in quite some time i had to come and do me a drag show with you one day so well if you if you ever get a minute if you ever get a minute to like off that comedy tour this lady got me working blame really? her good well that's a good thing i like whenever i see my friends and my family um and they they, they get on these shows like drag race or, or the comics like on tv and i'm watching my friends on tv i don't want to see you i don't want to see you i like when mayhem for instance got on drag race i was like i don't want to see you I, i'll <laughs> see you next year i want you to be gone i want to face time with you because i want my friends to be successful and busy so whenever you do get a minute and do get a second to come hang out come hang out but if not uh, I'll i will I'll you know i will more i always i feel indebted to you always because oh. you knew what i was up against down here in southern california and it was never because i was not entertaining and didn't have beautiful clothes and the crowd didn't love me it was because people didn't like me for personal reasons yeah. personal reasons never stopped my talent and thank no. you for seeing my talent morgan well, because you and I are very much similar in that respect. They don't like us because we're unapologetic about who we are. That's because I'm part Scottish. I just didn't tell you. <laughs> right, I knew it. I knew it. You know, they, they say there's black Irish. I knew you were black Scottish. Oh, I'm good in black, too. Oh, Morgan, I love you. Thank you I for coming you on and sharing the insight with us, Morgan Michael. Y'all follow Morgan McMichael. She's RuPaul's Drag Race. She is Cal Southern California royalty. She got a show everywhere. I'm going to come to a Mickey's one Monday night because that's what I like. I like Mickey. Oh yeah, and you know what? I'm super excited because I started booking Mickey's um, in February. I, I took over the booking and uh, we're, there's now a trans entertainer in the show every week. There's at least two queens of color in the show every oh, week. Oh, Morgan, we're, thank we're, you for we're that. Diversifying. And we've, I connected uh, Mickey's uh, Showgirls to an amazing charity called Sisters. <clears throat> so every week we do a group number at the end and we donate uh, those tips to a charity. So, so far we've raised over $9,000 for this charity in, uh, it's called Sisters in Pittsburgh. It's run by trans women of color for trans people of color. And I implore any show director, any 
uh, person that does drag and does a drag show, connect your club and your show to a charity. Do oh, it. Morgan, that is great. Miss Morgan, you are a bad mother. Shut your mouth. I love that. I love you for that. Thank you, my darling. You. you are right, beautiful. Be Thank you, Morgan. Wow, right, what a show we had, y'all, today. Lauren Hogan, thank you for coming to work today. Look, <laughs> look. What, thank me for coming. I'm messing with you, I Lauren. Like, oh, my. See, see, she, she's been sitting there too quiet for too long now. I, I had too much time. Well, no, you. At, at times like this in the show where I'm not familiar with the topic, you know, I will sit back and just let you have the conversation because I'm not all immersed in drag. I don't I don't know the ins and outs of it, so it's, it's okay for me you to You work quiet. for AHF. You've seen plenty of drag, honey. I have. <laughs> But thank you, guys. Thank you for the information. Listen, whatever is important to you and to your family or how you raise your children, that is on you. The, the, the responsibility falls on you, not on your kid, not on your kid, not on the mm -hmm. entertainer and not on the club owner. It's on you. Please protect yourself. If you can get the monkeypox vaccine, I'm encouraging you guys to get mm -hmm. it because this ain't even about sex. This is about skin to skin. And y'all know y'all love to hug me and touch on me and take pictures with me. And I don't want to seem rude or ignorant or, or disgruntled. But no, because I don't want the monkeypox. I'm telling you now, it's a no for me because I can't do it. I'm scared. Well, on that note, uh, here at Life and Learn, we have a saying that we're never trying to get anybody to change your mind. Always just trying to get you to use your mind because. And in order to have to use your mind, you have to have one. Tasha's I IG address is Tasha Long, the Tasha Long. August 17th, I will be in Columbus, Ohio at the Columbus Funny Bone. You can go to the website to get your tickets. I'm going to make a commercial about it right now. Uh, there goes Tasha right there. The Tasha Long. Follow her. She does a great show every Thursday on live. If you ever get a chance to see that woman live, her Dion Warwick and her Tina Turner is so phenomenal. Her Whoopi Goldberg, she's a woman of characters, and she does them greatly. Uh, follow her and do that. I'm at Tommy T's in Pleasanton, California, August 26th through 28th. Go to the website to get your tickets. And Chicago, September the 1st and 4th, Tasha Long will be on my show in Chicago, September the 4th for the brunch. Or for the first one of them. She won't want to show. Might be on both of them. Uh, you can get your tickets at Eventbrite under Hishiwi. Mm -hmm. is it, yeah, under, it's under to, Flame Monroe. It's under Flame Monroe. So go to Eventbrite and get your tickets. Thank you guys for joining us. Use your mind. Think for yourselves because the decision that you make, the only person that's responsible for that decision at the end of it, if you're happy with it or not happy with it, is the person that's looking back at you in your mirror. This is Flame Monroe. This is Lauren Hogan. That is Mr. Kendall. Follow Lauren Hogan at Lauren Armani H on Instagram. And please subscribe to her YouTube page, which is Lauren Hogan. Mm -hmm. Also, she has built um, the Laugh and Learn Laugh page. Laugh and Learn page, Talk yes. And so you guys have been following us, too. So um, we're actually going to probably going to start going live from that platform going forward. So make sure you follow so that way you can get the notification when we start our lives. Um, that's at Laugh and Learn Podcast. Yeah. And you follow Flame at Monroe Flame on Instagram, Marcus and Monroe Parker on Facebook. Don't follow the Twitter. It's Hull of Porn and Flame Monroe 125 on TikTok. Oh, that's right. I do have TikTok. Mm -hmm. Where am I going? And Instagram, I'm at Monroe Flame. Y'all out here, right? I said that already. Flamets, I love you. I thank you guys. Please follow Morgan McMichaels, Bobby Clifford. TTJN does the real TTJN every Thursday night. She has a column which she comes on live. She's greatly, worldly lives. She talks about everything. She'll answer your questions. And we appreciate you. We'll talk to you guys next week. Flame don't ever want to get off live. Bye. Bye.